Three, two, one. How you guys doing? Welcome back. Life Beyond Sun Devil Football. I'm your co-host, Bannon Clark. It's crazy to even think we are here. Episode eight for Life Beyond Sun Devil Football. If you guys don't know, we are on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Make sure you're following us on all those platforms. On Twitter, make sure it's Beyond Sun Devil. On Instagram, we're Life Beyond ASC Football. And don't forget, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Life Beyond Sun Devil Football. We appreciate you guys dearly. On the other side of the mic, I have my co-host, Emily. Emily, how are you doing today? Doing pretty good. You know, just a beautiful Friday afternoon. That is true. We got a beautiful Friday afternoon. We're here for episode eight. And speaking of that episode, we have ourselves a big time guest coming out of ASU. Former safety, number 35, Owen Rogers. Owen, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Glad to be here. Thank you, man. So let's just get right into it. Um, we know coming out of AS before ASU, you went to Brophy High School, a very private school out here in Scottsdale and Phoenix in the Arizona yep. area. I've had family that have gone there that have actually made it out of D1 to the University of Denver for a swim. Shout out my cousin, Luke Williams. What was it like playing for a private school? I know that how it works with Xavier and Brophy. It's an all boys. And then you have Xavier, which is an all girls school. Um, I personally went to a public high school. Um, Emily, I believe, pretty much went to a public high school, if I'm not mistaken. I went to a private school. She went to private school, came close. I just, I thought public. Sorry, I got to think public with you sometimes, <laughs> Emily. But what was that like playing under just an all-boys environment? Um, you know, I mean, it was a little weird. Like, definitely like, jokes and, like, guys, like, clowning on you from your friends. Like, oh, you go to an all-guys school. But, you know, I mean, I thought it was a cool environment for me. It was definitely a unique experience. And uh, just like the day-to-day, -day, like class, you can kind of like just mess around with your boys. Don't have to worry about like high school, social anxiety with girls and stuff like that. So, I mean, it was a cool, unique experience for me. So kind of like going into ASU football, I mean, you're still around boys all the time, the locker room, the camaraderie of it all. What was kind of like your schedule like and what was that environment like for playing uh, for ASU? Uh, well, schedule-wise, it was definitely a shock just with how busy everything was. I mean, you know, like right off the get-go in the winter, you got 6 a.m. workouts, then meetings after that, and then by the time noon hits, then you obviously have class and everything. And then that goes from like noon to like 4 or 5 or whatever. So, I mean, the scheduling, it was very busy being a student athlete there, so that was definitely a shock. And I mean, just being able to play for Arizona State, that was um, a school that my mom actually worked for when I was growing up in Arizona. Oh, wow. so, in that. <laughs> so it was a team that I always watched when I was a kid. And then to be actually be able to like put on the uniform, practice them, and then to go run out of the field, it was, it was really awesome for me. Yeah, it's and been I, a pretty surreal experience to like <laughs> see it your entire life and then actually like be able to play for it. I don't know. Crazy. Yeah, no, it was, it was crazy. I mean, especially for a local team. I mean, obviously, Arizona is pretty much in your area, in your distance. I feel like that, especially for your mother, I feel like that has to be just like a, a crazy accomplishment. I feel for anyone that also is a D1 athlete, that already is a crazy accomplishment. But I know that also at, I know at ASU, the, where there were some good seasons, there were some bad ones. I know kind of late into Coach Graham's uh, coaching tenure, the, the seasons weren't that good. I know that there were some yeah. 500, under 500, a little over 500. In a locker room like that, where there there's such a vast difference as far as NFL talent versus kind of just the walk-ons, and then you have like the mid-tier guys, guys that could make the NFL, maybe not. What yeah, was the yeah. locker room when you guys are not playing so well? And you know that around the time, kind of the 2017 years when Coach Graham got fired, what was what was that locker room truly like? Just the difference that you saw back from when you started playing to when you didn't. Um. Well, when you're not doing well, then everyone to look at like kind of what's not going right and then there's a lot of like question about leadership whether it be from like guys on the team but more specifically it usually goes towards coaching and I mean that's just kind of one of the unfortunate things about locker rooms that I've experienced from two division one programs like when stuff's not going too well like just the blame game starts to happen and it's kind of unfortunate to see and at Arizona State it's a, there was a lot of that like Fingers being pointed at the coaches, and then obviously, like people outside of our locker room were doing that too, and then ultimately led to Coach Graham being fired. Unfortunately, if you don't mind me asking, you're saying fingers were being pointed. Who are those fingers mainly exactly? I mean, you don't have to say names if you don't want to. Maybe you can say just like a position, or maybe just a certain type of coach. What were those fingers being truly pointed at in your mind? And I know we'll talk a little bit about how obviously you did play for two Division One programs. What mm. was? Well, who do you think the fingers were truly pointed at? 
Mm, I mean, put, uh, Coach Graham. I'd say Coach Graham. And that's just from that's just from what you saw, what you saw from playing with, like playing with him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, were you? Do you think you were one of those fingers that truly were like you? You agreed with those pointers, uh, fingers being pointed, or were you completely against it? Because we've heard a lot. We say this every time, pretty much, because we've we interview a lot of guys that played under Coach Graham. We've only had one guy that has had the transition of playing with Coach Graham and, and Coach, Coach Herm Edwards. And we can tell you that we know Coach Graham's an old school coach. He's not too much of a player's coach, in my opinion. He is very mm-hmm. much so an old school type of guy. And we've seen that, seen that kind of now when he's out of Hawaii. So do you do you agree with those claims made by other teammates of yours, or maybe some that didn't even play with you? What well, what were the exact claims? I'm sorry. Um, ex- I mean, it was truthfully like we we've we've got to know a little bit about Coach Graham, and we can see that he's an old school coach. It's very he has a system. You either ride with it or you don't ride with it. And mm-hmm. if you don't ride with it, that's gonna be a problem. We we literally had we had Carlos Mendoza come on, and he mm-hmm. literally went ripped into Coach Graham and talking about how. Like I, you probably you, did you play you played with Carlos Mendoza did you Yeah yeah I know Carlos Yeah he he talked to us a lot about that and there were multiple other guys that did and that's why I'm saying is a guy that and you obviously did transfer so that's why mm-hmm. I mean we we're gonna get to that a little more maybe I don't know that has to do with Coach Graham but you understand I'm how we play too, right? Yeah we can we're obviously gonna talk about that and life beyond Sunday the football we gotta get the research going mm-hmm. so that they yeah. can happen but. Would you say well, like what do you say to your teammates do you do you, do you stand by them do you agree with them you know, I mean, Coach Graham definitely – he definitely had, like, his way of running things. And, yeah, if you didn't agree with it, I mean, there might be a problem because, I mean, at the end of the day, it is his program and it is, like, how he likes to run things. Um, how it came off to certain people definitely wasn't always the best and they didn't always, like, really take kind to, like, some of the things that he did. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I think, like, his core values definitely got a lot better, like, as his time uh, was spent more at Arizona State. And I think, like, his core values, I think he is very well-intentioned. And I really do think that he does care about his players. Now, is that going to come off to, like, an 18, 19, 20-year-old? Yeah. I mean, probably not. Like, like you said, he is old school, and that's always not going to, like, come off very well to certain kids. But, you know, I think at his, his time at Arizona State, at least when I was there, progressed. I do think that he started to become a better person, more genuine. Like, I had a like better awareness of himself and how others perceived him. And so I did. I think he do improve. And then I've talked to him a little bit since he left. And I, mean, I hope he's continued to improve as he coaches at Hawaii now. Well, Owen, we have a segment on our show called Check That Tweet. Well, we go ahead and deep dive on our guests' personal social media, Instagram, Twitter, you name it. So we, we dug a little bit on your Twitter. Um, I know that um, you're, not too, you're not too huge with it, but this really took me out. Um, this goes out to your boy, Matt Meyer. Um, it basically goes like my, we're going back to December 7th, 2015. My boy uh, at Matt Meyer went from let's watch Star Wars to new phone, who this? It's basically one photo is him in the, it looks like a younger photo of him in a Seahawks oh, yeah, jacket. Yeah. And then you got him in a full on suit and tie. So I respect the tweet, any context behind that at all. Just kind of went, what was your mind thinking when you put that out? Oh man, that's like one of the few things I've ever tweeted, honestly, if I remember it perfectly. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, I don't know. He was like kind of a nerdy kid in high school. Like, he always talked about how much he loves Star Wars. Like, I mean, we were, like, all nerds in high school, so it's, like, whatever. <laughs> but, I mean, so we joined a frat at Arizona State. Like, started going out more, like, talking to more okay. people, talking to more girls. And kind of just, like, found himself, like, some swagger, I guess. Like, Do you remember what frat him. he joined? Do you remember what frat he joined? Uh, I don't. I don't. I wish I did. I know he's getting mad like, at me. It's free promotion at this point. So that's what I was saying. It's free promotion. Yeah. Yeah. I think I like Sig Ta, I think, something like that. Okay, Sig Ta. Okay. Does that sound familiar at all? Yeah, yeah, it sounds familiar to me. Yeah. I'm not in a frat. I'm not in a frat, unfortunately, but no, uh-huh. I was saying free promotion for Sig Ta. Wait, oh. But yeah, no, I mean, it was just like a. Oh, sorry. What? What frat were you in? Oh, I wasn't in a frat. Oh, you weren't? Oh, okay, my uh-huh. bad. I, I no, had to know if you were, you know, got to do some research. Go ahead. Well, oh, I mean, but, I mean, yeah, that was just him, like, I don't know. Like I said, he was like feeling more confident in himself, like all and, that. And you're just respecting so, yeah. that. You're 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 slightly yeah, respecting yeah. that a little bit. I, I, that's yeah. boy to boy. I get that. I get that. 
Yeah, no, I said, like, hey, man, I think I'm going to tweet this. And he was like, oh, yeah, 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 do it, do it, do it. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I know we talked a little bit about this before we did the Check That Tweet segment. We know that you transferred to the University of Baylor. So what were mm-hmm. your coaching differences? And what were the differences, as the, like, for the program as a whole? Well, I mean, there are a little bit of similarities because, like, as I left Arizona State, um obviously we weren't doing too well and there's like a lot of chaos in the locker room and then when I transferred to Baylor they were kind of like in the process of that so the year before I came to Baylor they went one in 11 guys were kind of like questioning like does this dude really know what he's talking about like like he's a very like outspoken individual Matt Rule yeah and they just current current one Carolina 11. Panthers head coach current Carolina Panthers head coach. yeah so he definitely <laughs> moved on up <laughs> But, I mean, honestly, like, when I got there, like, they were in the process of that. And a lot of the people that weren't kind of buying into the program, they had already either transferred or, like, gotten into trouble and they weren't on the team anymore. So, honestly, like, that's, like, where one of the differences I saw was, like, a lot of those guys were bought in. Even though they didn't really have, like, the success yet, like, guys were bought in. They were, like, all right, I mean, this is our coach, so we kind of just got to, like, this is all we got. So, if we're going to stay here, we got to buy in. And then those guys that bought in, which ended up being my senior class, like they saw a lot of success in that. The next year we went seven and six, went to a bowl game, won that. And then we had a very good year, 11 and one. Unfortunately, we lost in our Big 12 uh, championship game, but reached the first New Year's Six Bowl for Baylor in quite some time. So I think that was the difference. Like there was adversity with both teams, but at Baylor there was just – seniors that really decided to buy into the program and then just kind of make it like their standard and not a coach's standard if that makes sense yeah I mean like I think that all makes sense and like obviously like the coaching like did you feel like the Baylor University coach like was he different from uh okay. Ram? like what what were those differences um I mean they preached similar values I think Coach Rule kind of like he had went to a program in Temple before Baylor where they were kind of in a similar situation as to where Baylor was like kind of down in the dumps, like not very much success. So Coach Rule had experience rebuilding a program like that. Obviously, like Baylor being a power five, it's just like a higher scale. But I think they preach a lot of similar things. And Coach Rule had done it before. He had better experience, like, rebuilding a program. And Coach Rule also knows how to hire some really good coaches to back him up with that, too. And he knows how to hire coaches that understand football very well, too. I mean, I can't disagree with that just from him going to Carolina. And obviously, I know that it hasn't been an impactful team so far. But I will say, just talking NFL, we rarely ever talk NFL on this show. I will say Coach Rule, so far, what he's doing in Carolina is, is, is a big deal. I think it's... I think he's mm-hmm. somewhat turning over that treat team around. When he got that NFL coaching job or was going to get hired, were you – what do you think – was it was it more of a well-deserved type thing? Were you kind of shocked that he actually left a, a program like Baylor? Because obviously you guys had – you started out 111, had your successes throughout the way. Were you shocked as an individual thing and that he was going to the NFL? I think in my mind, I knew that Coach Rule was going to go to the NFL at some point. I mean, if you look back on it, after his one in 11 year, he already had NFL offers. He did. He did. And I mean, that just kind of speaks to like how much other people respect him in this industry. So I knew he was going to go to the NFL at some point. I mean, honestly, like I kind of, a part of me did kind of wish that he would have stayed in college sports because like, I really do think that coach rule like has a gift when it comes to developing young men. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's very good. He's a very good football coach, obviously. So I was a little bit sad to see that, but I mean, I know he's doing the same thing in the NFL. He's still developing like just slightly older men, essentially. And I mean, he's doing what he loves and that's coaching football. So no, I'm nothing but respect for him. And I'm so proud for him. Absolutely. Well, Owen, we have one last segment on the show. It's called rapid fire questions. We ask students and Emily and I want to get to know you a little better. So we just have some quick questions, no timer. Just try to say it as quickly as possible. You ready? Let's do it. All right. Yep. Favorite meal. Uh, pizza. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Favorite artist right now? Mm, Lil Durk. Lil Durk. Funniest teammate you ever played with? Uh, 
Russell Morris and Baylor. What about ASU? Mm, probably Jacob Brimhall. Jacob Brimhall, muscle hamster himself. We love him. He was on episode three. We absolutely <laughs> got, got a lot of love for him. Hot or cold? Hot. All right. Now, I know you play both at ASU and Baylor. You got to tell me which rivalry is better, Baylor TCU or U of A ASU? That's tough, man. That's tough. I mean, I got to go with Baylor TCU because okay. the two times we played them, those are games that I actually played in. So, I mean, ASU, U of A, like, those were big rivalries for me when I was growing up, but I, I never really, like, got to play in those games. So, for me, like, personally, it just means a little bit more to me, Baylor TCU. And I'm Baylor, glad my senior year that we beat them. That is – I know, that's a big thing. I, I, took a tour, I took a tour over to TCU, and I, I know that they, their love for Baylor is through the roof. I mean, I'll say that for sure, the love for Baylor. And I know it's probably the other way around as well. Yeah, I can't repeat a lot of things that were <laughs> from the sideline. You're good. <laughs> you keep keep that keep that to yourself. We're all good. We got to keep PG thirteen. <laughs> Favorite holiday? Mm, Christmas. Who do you think is winning March Madness? If you don't know, you can just shout out. You can say Baylor if you want. I know they're pretty. They're doing pretty well. I mean, mm, I don't know if I'll get into trouble if I say Baylor because I actually work for Texas Tech now. Um, oh, you I'll do. Say Baylor. You're saying Baylor. Unfortunately, Texas Tech, I didn't really – I wish I picked them, but I have them upset this round. I'm not going to lie. I have them upset. Oh, dang. That's I know it's bad. I know it's bad. But, no, no, but I love Texas Tech, but I had to I had to flip it around. It's the one-year March <laughs> Madness I just haven't cared about. So, But I'm going that. I Sorry, man. Guilty pleasure. Mm, sweets. Best food spot in Tempe. This is a big question. This is how it mm, – Tempe. Mm, probably Fuzzies. Fuzzies it – is oh, yeah. oh, oh Emily's a little bit of disagreement with that. Uh -oh. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've never been to Fuzzies. I'm kind of like biased. I'm just I mean, kind never of been like there, a know. person. <laughs> 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 if, you've been, well, if you've been there, you didn't know. That's literally that's perfect. That's how you end it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, Owen, we appreciate you for coming on the show, guys. Make sure you go ahead and follow Owen on all social media platforms. We are going to have that down, link in the bio. Owen, thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah, man, really appreciate you guys. This is awesome. Thank you.